She's in the hospital. Is that so? Nothing serious, I hope, Ken. No, sir. She's just on the operating table in a couple of hours. Two hours? How's she coming out? Well, I call up the hospital, and they say she's doing as well as can be expected. But what do they mean by that, Mr. Ryan? Well, what they mean, there's nothing to worry about. She's doing fine. Crowded tonight? Oh, yes, always crowded. Some people got the dough, and thousands are starving. Yeah, that's the truth. Lots of them folks in there is hungry, too. They, they're starving. What else can you starve for except food? Oh, lots of things. Maybe they don't know just what it is. Most all them folks are starving for something. And it ain't just food. They comes in here and eats and dances around and hugs herself up to a woman. For a while, they think they're happy. Then they comes out. And the old world is just as cold and empty as it was before. That's real stopping, Mr. Wright. Why, Tim, you're a philosopher. Yes, I. You don't say so. Well, that ain't what my wife Mary says. She just says I'm a fool talking old colored man. <laughs> <laughs> Philosophizer. <laughs> so long, Tim. Hey, you know, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Let's see what that vaudeville act is. Let's pretend that we're two old farmers feeding each other. Two farmers milking a cow? Yeah. All right. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Happy. Hello there, big shot. Happy, I want you to meet my new girlfriend. This is Miss Smith. Pleased to meet you. Say, I knew a Smith once. <laughs> Oh, you the 
way it does me. Oh, no, not at all. No, husband. Where have you been? Out. Where? Just out. Our class was asking for you. Wants to see you about the new costumes. Stay on the job, will you? Yes, master. Glad to see you again. Thanks. You got your ammunition, mister. You have a nice table for the young man. Yes, sir. Right this way, please. Thank you for taking care of my wife the other night. She was just telling me what a good time she had in here with her cousin. Why, there must be some mistake. Why, I haven't seen Mrs. Bryce since you were in here together. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you. Well, sure, sure. Now, Mr. Suspicious, I hope you're satisfied. Listen, darling, you knew that I was only kidding. Now, didn't you? Oh, hello, Ed. Hiya, Happy. Did you do any good in the big game last night? About 11 G's. Not bad. Who'd you take? Some umches from Philly. Soft touches. Them Philadelphians still thinks that poker's a game of chance. <laughs> never give a sucker an even break. I never give anybody an even break. <laughs> I believe you. See you later. Okay, big shot. It isn't Ed Powell, the cold deck king. Hiya, Daisy. Oh, I can't complain. Well, I bet you do. Can I see Ruth or is she dressing? As if that is doctor. Hey, Taylor. All right. <laughs> what all you guys see in that bimbo is beyond me. Not beyond you. Just behind you by about ten years, sweetheart. Say, listen, you. Hello, Mr. Powell. Ed to you. All right, hello, Ed. How about going out after the show? You don't believe in taking no for an answer, do you? No, and I just don't take yes, either. Oh. Don't look at me like that, Mr. Powell. You scare me. You're quite a kidder, ain't you? Well, do we or don't we? I'll toss you for it. Heads, it's a date. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> you forget you showed me this two-headed phony the other night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll leave it to the next gal that comes out of the ladies' room. Blonde or brunette. And it's your pick. All right. I'll take, uh, I'll take blonde. If it's brunette, you got a date. Yes, miss. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> you ought to pay double on that. Tomorrow night, too. <laughs> Yeah, the Rand 
case. Oh, yes, his mother killed his father. Yeah, in the other woman's apartment. There's old Papa Goldberg again. Yeah, the more he comes here, the lower he gets. Think you could make the grade? I don't suppose I could. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right by me. I have enough hoping to do tonight anyhow. Are you here all alone? No, I'm in the show. Well, oh, don't tell me you didn't notice me. I'm on the left hand, you know, the face with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I thought they were all smiling. 
I guess I'll see you, Grace. Will you have a little drink? No, thanks. I'm trying to live long enough to see good liquor come back. <laughs> well, this stuff isn't so bad. Hey, hey, what's your hurry? You know, they can make it faster than you can drink it. <laughs> well, I bet you I'm making them work nights anyway. Hey, there you from Schenectady? No. Oh, too bad. Have a drink. No, thank you. No? Oh, well, there, there, must, there must be somebody here from Schenectady. There is. Come on, I'll show you. Promise? Absolutely. You see the last table on this side? Now listen carefully. Last table on this side, now listen carefully. Here. The last table on this side, the man with the bald head. He's from Schenectady. The last table with the bald head from Schenectady. Right. The last day with a bald head from Schenectady. <laughs> My old pal from Schenectady. Mais qu'est-ce qui vous prend, monsieur? D'abord, je ne vous connais pas. Qui êtes-vous? Pourquoi venez-vous m'ennuyer ici à ma table? Vous n'avez aucune raison. <rire> qu'est-ce que vous venez faire? Voulez-vous me le dire un peu? Tu me connais, quoi, Rose? Mais non, je ne m'étends pas. Eh bien, alors, qu'est-ce que vous venez faire ici? Non, je veux bien me laisser tranquille. André! Ben, je veux bien me laisser tranquille. Je ne veux pas venir m'embêter ici à ma table, n'est-ce pas? Et dès que vous le bien une seule fois. Great! That's all I wanted to know. Oh! Alors, alors, ça, c'est trop fort, par exemple, de supporter oh, un individu comme ça à votre table. Ah, oh, ça, je ne oh, peux pas voir ça en peinture, cet individu-là. Non, mais tu vas parler, c'est moi. Mais qu'est-ce que tu veux que je fasse Non, c'est moi, c'est moi. Ah, non, c'est ce que Now, don't you think you'd better get ready for the next number? Oh, that's right. I do work here, don't I? Sure. <laughs> Not hard to take that, baby. But new number's awful ragged, Klaus. Yeah, I'll make them rehearse tonight after the show. That's a good idea. Certainly give that tailor dame a lot of attention, don't you? Jealous, sweetheart? Every woman that wriggles her curves through here has you screwy. The good thing I don't keep as close a check on you as you do on me. Meaning just what? Nothing, baby. Not a thing in the world. And believe me, you, sister, I told him where to get off. Good for you. Yes, sir. Can't find it. Oh, you're buzzing that Ram kid. How'd you make out? Oh, he's in a bad way. I was trying to talk him out of it. Out of what? A fur coat? Did he understand what you meant? He did, but you wouldn't if I told you. Uh oh. Ladies of the ensemble. You bimbos are going to rehearse tonight after we close. Oh. Uh, Not me. I got a date with my new winter romance. Oh, yeah? Well, you'll have to wait till spring. But really, Mr. Klaus, I got to go to Brooklyn. My mother's there. No, that's just too big. Have a hug, will you? It's going to be a rehearsal tonight, and all those who don't want to stay can quit. You got it? Somebody ought to rub that guy out. Happy will if he ever catches him with his wife. Happy will poison him. Yeah, if kissing Mrs. Mac doesn't poison him, nothing will. Right you are, dearie. Should have heard those dames when I told them they had to rehearse tonight. <laughs> Did they squawk? Plenty. <laughs> Every little thing. Oh, Ken, King, everything's pretty good. That's great. See you later. Sure. She's got a nice voice, that gal. Uh huh. Who break the chain that binds me? I need no shackles to remind me. Stand and wait now. Joey, come on. Let's play me back at the pump, huh? Oh. Master. Will you do me oh, a favor? No. Why should I drop dead? <laughs> I can't escape. <laughs> for it's too late now. I'm just a prisoner of love. What's the good? 
and stare at him so, Edith. Someone is sharing. He looks so much like his father. And you loved his father, didn't you? Very much. I hope he loved me as much as I loved him. As far as I can make out, his wife must have been a most detestable sort of woman. You've no idea, Jim. Why, she never gave a thought to his happiness or to the boy. She's the most selfish woman that ever lived. Why, she used to drive him mad with her extravagances. You'll have to forget it, Edith. I can't forget it. I wish I could. My dying day, I'll be seeing her standing over him with that gun in her hand, cursing him. It's too bad. She'd probably make the boy just as unhappy as she made the father. I want to talk to him for his father's sake. <laughs> I'll wait for you at the door. Michael Rand, do you know who I am? You're Edith Blair. I want to talk to you for a moment. Friends, you'll have to excuse me. You must listen to me. Right or not? Your father would want you to listen to me, Michael. He loved you, but he loved me too. Won't you believe me when I tell you that there was nothing but honest friendship between your father and myself? True. Well, why didn't you say that on the stand? I know jury in the world would believe that a married man had the right to ease his heart with another woman. They never would have believed that it was just friendship. And even if they had, it wouldn't have helped your mother or you. Well, why are you telling me this now? Because I know what you're going through. I know how you loved your father. And I don't want anything or anybody to kill that love. Please. I can't stand this. I'm going. But, but remember one thing. I held him in my arms after he was dead. And your mother stood over him and cursed him. Cursed him. Not me. Please go. She didn't tell you that, did she? She didn't tell you what a hell she made of his life while you were away at college. She didn't tell you that several times he came to me with his mind made up to kill himself. Stop it. Stop it. All right. But keep this always before you. Your father loved you, Michael. Don't ever let anyone make you hate him. Not even your mother. She cursed him. She never gave him a chance. Not a chance. Can I do anything for you, sir? No. Well, what do you want? I just wanted to see if Get I... Get out of here. Get out of here, I tell you. Get out! What's the idea, young fellow? Don't touch me. Get away from me, will I'll you? Listen, you pipe down. Leave me alone. Stay away from me. Stay, Stay down. Down. Get Get away from me. Stay Stay out. Out. On the couch in my office. I had to clap. You didn't have to do it that way, did you? Well, you get some water from my desk. Your wife said there's someone to see you, Mr. McDonough. It's very important. Now you take care of him, kid.
Happy. Oh, Big Talkman, what's on your mind? The big boy wants to know why you're still getting your stuff from Casey. Well, it's just like I told you last week. I've always done business with Casey, and I've got no reason to change. You've got an awful good reason to change if you only knew it. How come? The big fella's plenty sore. He's about to turn on the heat. Well, it's a cold night. We can stand a little more steam. Okay. I'll tell him how you feel. So long. Have a cigar. Thanks. I'll help myself later. Hat and coat. Hand me my gun. Where are you going? Out. Where? Just out. Take good care of yourself, dearie. Don't get your feet wet. Mr. Happy, I was real worried about my old woman, and I can't get no sense out of that hospital. Can I get off early and go see her? No, I can't let you off yet. Stick around till I get back. Yes. Hey, yes, Miss Brain. Uh, the car's waiting for you. Yes. Well, here I am. My wife just come out? Yes, sir. Mrs. Bryce just drove off. What, did she seem to be angry? Did she drive off in a huff? No, sir, in a Cadillac. There was a young gentleman with her, uh, her cousin. You know, he was with her the other night. Oh, I see. Oh, you my. What have I done? I, I just fixing to use the telephone. All right, Tim, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Uh, the number is Caledonia 54200. Uh, yes, the, the county hospital. The hospital? Yes. I, I just called up the hospital. It looks like prohibition then laid him out cold. Happy hung one on his chin. For what? For nothing. Nothing. Well, Mr. Happy done that for nothing. That's about the only thing he ever give away. Uh, yeah, yeah, sir. Uh, this is the county hospital. Uh, this is Mr. Washington talking. I, I want to talk to the lady on the fourth floor that talks to the lady that knows the nurse is tending my wife, Ms. Washington. What's that? Real sneezing. Oh, that don't mean nothing. She does that at home. I want to know how is she? Yeah. Uh, I'll call up again. Rest and easy. One time is doing as well as can be expected, then no change. Now rest and easy. Oh, she'll be all right. Yeah, I hope you're right, Missy. Mm. Yeah, how did come to get in here? Mm. Medicine. <laughs> I don't suppose Mr. Happy mind if I just take a little drop. Powerful cold outside. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't. Miss Happy, she just about killed me. She don't like me no how. Oh, sure she does. Everybody likes you, Tim. No, oh, no, she don't. She don't like nobody but Mr. Klaus. You shouldn't talk about such things, Tim. No, I know it, but <laughs> I, I guess that's because I'm, what you call it, uh, a philosophizer. That, uh -huh. That's it. You see, I know it ain't none of my business, but I can't help from noticing things. It's a mighty funny world. The wrong people always likes the wrong people. I bet you everybody in that room there likes the wrong people. Mr. Klaus, he likes Mrs. Happy. The boss, the gambler, Mr. Powell, he likes you. <laughs> bet you like this little young fellow here, huh? <laughs> oh, excuse me, Missy. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. I, I, I guess I'd better be getting on out in the snow. Cold won't be so bad now for a spell. <laughs> sure is good medicine, Mr. Happy's got. <laughs> yeah. Feeling better, huh? Well, guess I'm about doing as well as can be expected. <laughs> the 
better cut out playing nurse, Taylor, if you want to keep your job. Come on, they're ready for the next number. All right. I'll keep them for him. Oh, thanks, but I haven't got time to count it. I hope Francois is waiting outside with the car. If he isn't, I'll fire that dumb Frenchman so fast he won't be able to wee wee madame for a week. for bear hunting. Oh, don't mention it. Are there any other wild animals around here I can bump off for you? Oh, and you might try to scare away that herd of wild buffaloes. Boom. There, that scattered them, didn't it? <laughs> Thanks. I guess I'll have to recommend you for the Carnegie Life Saving Medal. Oh, I swell. You feeling better? It's too early to tell. There seems to be something wrong with my jaw. It's a wonder it works at all. You know, Happy's famous for his short arm jolt. Oh, so that's what happened. Mm -hmm. What did I do to earn it? You got the jitters. Oh, I've been doing that a lot lately. What you need is a nice drink. That's right. Of water. Can't you do any better than that? What kind of a dump do you think this joint is? This is a nightclub, not a speakeasy. All Happy serves is white rock and ginger ale and hopes nobody dies on the premises. Here, insult your stomach with this. Thanks. You know, this hospital's got the cutest nurses' uniforms I've ever seen. <laughs> You're feeling better, beginning to take notice. This is my practice outfit. The joint's closed and we're rehearsing. Rehearsing? Well, how long have I been out? Hey, I've been robbed. Oh, <laughs> I rolled you for them. Keep somebody else from trying it. Here. Gee, you've been asleep three hours. Here, I thought you might need this. Well, I certainly am getting service. Yes, sir. You know, happy short arm jolt must be dynamite. Yes, sir. It's probably just what I needed, though. Yes, sir. And no, sir. <laughs> I wonder if my legs work. Well, let's try them out. Come on. Take it easy. Mm. Lean on me, Grandpa. Uh. Thanks, Nursie. Mm. Are you sure these are my legs? You know, they don't feel like it. Well, they're the same ones you had when you came in. Say, so how do you expect them to act? You've been out on your feet for three days that I know of. Oh, my mistake. Hello, Ed. 
Mrs. Mack said I'd find you in here, but she didn't mention the boyfriend. No, she wouldn't. Uh, Mr. Wren, Mr. Powell. How are you? Same to you. Mr. Wren had a little accident. I was playing nurse. Yeah? See here, I guess I'm in the way. No, please so don't I'll... go. What's the idea of standing me up on my date? Well, we were called for rehearsal. I'll wait. Oh, well, it's too late to go anywhere. Every place is closed now. My apartment never closes, and I got supper waiting. How do you get that way? <laughs> Who are you trying to kid, me or Mr. Rand? Say, listen, you. Where do you get off that talking that way to me? I get it, I get it. You never went to a man's apartment alone in your life. You're just a poor little working girl trying to get along. Is that it? Well, maybe you can fool some guys, baby, but I got your number, you cheap gold. Just a minute. Thing. Keep out of this. Oh, Ed, please. He's been flung once already tonight. Wait outside for me. I'll go with you right after rehearsal. Well, send him on his way. I think you'd better go, please. Do you want me to? You heard it, young fella. Well, do you? Well, Don't worry about me. I'm all right. I think you'd better go. I'm going to see Miss Taylor home. Why, you... Put Mr. Powell in a taxi and tell the driver to take the post road from Boston. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. Good night, big shot, and pleasant dreams. <laughs> you am <have> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Mr. Dempsey, you've been holding out on me. I was lucky to land. It was the only punch I had in me. Boy, it was all you needed. What a wallop, right up from the floor. Say, who'd you ever fight? Well, I was pretty good at college. Lightweight champion. <laughs> and that big Broadway tin horn would pick on you. Say, you don't believe those cracks he was making about me, do you? Well, I haven't many illusions left. I'd like to keep the ones I have. And I'm one of them? I think you're swell. Oh, but that's just a, a what do you call it, illusion? I hope not. And I'm afraid I haven't much faith left. Guess you understand. Oh, sure, I understand. Let's not talk about it. What you need is some food and a pot of good hot coffee. Oh, there's the cold arms. I'll dig up a waiter to get you some meat. Thanks. So long. Rice and clean, Mrs. Rand. They're waiting for you, Taylor. I'm sorry to have interrupted any of your plans, whatever they were. How did you know where to find me? Your dresser was littered with cards, nightclubs, speakeasies. I tried them all. Aren't you going to ask me to sit down? Pardon me. Really, Michael, the warmth of your greeting overwhelms me. I realize I'm only your mother. Oh, you but... can't blame me for that. I had no choice in the matter. Michael, are you crazy? I don't think so. Perhaps I'm just beginning to see things clearly, to get a true sense of values. I can thank Edith Blair for that. Edith Blair? She was here tonight, and I had a talk with her. I learned something. Something I'd suspected, but hated to believe. What do you mean? I learned that you hadn't been any better wife than you've been a mother. How dare you talk to me like that? I'm sorry if I can't seem to live up to the generally accepted idea of a respectful and dutiful son. But wouldn't that be a little too much to expect in view of the fact that you murdered my father? So now it's murder. Edith Blair seems to have done her work well. You forget I was tried and acquitted by law. Is my own son going to put me on trial again? I'm afraid I've done that already. Yes, and the verdict. You didn't give him a chance. No chance for a word of defense or explanation. You put a pistol in your handbag like any gangster and tracked him to his death. It was murder. Cold, cruel, merciless murder. And this from my own son. I'm going to try to forget that part of it. I'm going. When you come to your senses, I'll... You'll hear what I have to say now. Because after tonight, you will never see me again. You're mad. Completely mad. Perhaps. But I don't believe you really think so. In your heart, you know I'm right. Look back over the years. Can you remember any time when you've been more than just a beautiful stranger to me? Did we ever have an hour together as mother and son? 
As far back as I can remember, I was in the care of servants. Sometimes I cried for you. They told me you couldn't come to me. You were out. Always out. I was still a little kid when you packed me off to boarding school. At vacation time, you were in Europe, and there was only Dad and me. Then came prep school and college. I gave up writing. You were always too busy to answer. Dad never was too busy to write to me, and he had work to do. Real work to earn the money that you squandered on clothes and jewels and trips abroad. There's just a little more to motherhood than the mere accident of birth. I owe you nothing for that. I didn't ask for it, and lately I've wished that it never happened. It seems to me that a mother has to earn her child's love and respect after their birth, not because of it. You're right. I never loved you. I never even wanted you. But you're exactly like your father, and I hated him. I only married him for his money, position. In the very beginning, I couldn't bear to have him touch me. And at the end, I hated him. And that's why you killed him? Yes. Because you couldn't bear to have him turn from you to find a little happiness elsewhere? Yes. I think you'd better go. Right away. Now! Ah, oh, here's Pete with the eat. Will you see what I ordered for you? Come on over. Smells good. Oh, just look at that steak. I cook him myself, the boss. She's a tender, just to like a baby's prayer. Keep the chain. Thanks, boss. What about the off to Buffalo? Sure. I'm sure tired of letting that guy order me around like I was dirt. Don't worry, honey. Something tells me we won't have to bother about him much longer. Mr. Happy, can I go to the hospital now? I'm sorry, Tim. I can't let you go now. I want you to watch the street and let me know if anybody's hanging around. Can I telephone again? Wait just a few minutes and keep your eye on the door. Yes. Uh-oh. I think we're due for the blow-off. What's all this, a rest cure? Where's Clance? He and Mrs. Mack are in your office, uh, going over a new routine. Thank you. 
That's all for tonight. Scram out of here. Say, so you were right about Happy's wallop. Oh, I'm glad that's over with. Well, I'll be dressed in a minute. Will you save a cup of coffee for me? Sure. Where are you going? Out. Out where? Just out. After what's happened tonight, you don't think I'm going to stick around here, do you? I do. Well, think again, big shot. You and I are quits. Oh, no, we are not. If you think I'm going to let you go to Klaus, you're crazy. I'm going to keep you here to make you sweat and like it. And I'm going to poke you, see, every time you look at another guy. It'll be just like sitting on the hot seat, not knowing when that juice is coming on. And there won't be any divorce, baby, until I want to get it. Somehow, I don't think there'll ever be any divorce. Didn't take me long, did it? Oh. Not at all. Good night, darling. Don't stay up too late. I won't. And kiss your grandchildren good night for me. Uh-oh. Ah, <laughs> uh, meet with some Java. By the way, do you know why they call it Java? Because it comes from Brazil, I suppose. <laughs> Java. That's an idea. What? What's the matter? Isn't my head on straight? Oh, sorry, I was just thinking. Haven't you done enough of that lately? That's what I was thinking. You know what I'd do if I were in your place? What? I'd take the first boat or train out of this town and keep going until I landed in one of those funny little islands you read about. You know, where all you wear is a smile and the monkeys drop coconuts right in your lap. Java. Is Java one of those places? It's pretty close to one. Did you ever hear of the island of Bali? <laughs> no, I don't get much time for the movies. <laughs> Well, I've read about it. It's one of the few unspoiled places in the world. Little island, not far from Java, where it's always sunshine and moonlight. And there are no telephones or automobiles or subways. Or nightclubs. Or jazz bands. Or chorus girls. Oh, yes, lots of those. Coffee-colored ones. And they come laughing down through the palm trees and dance in front of your veranda. Then you just lie back in the moonlight, with your arm around your sweetie's waist. Coffee-colored waist? Probably. Oh. Oh, sunburn. Sure, I forgot that. <laughs> you know, there's a big ship sails every week for all around the world. Stops at Bali. You can get off, stay as long as you like, and then go on to another port. I'm going on the next boat. Swell. What day is today? Uh, it's Thursday now. It was Wednesday tonight. That's funny. I was looking up those ships last week. They sail on Thursdays. I'll pack tonight and leave today. <laughs> well, you act fast when you make up your mind. Will you go with me? You do believe what Ed Powell said about me? Oh, of course not. We'd be married first. <coughs> married? Why not? What have we got to lose? Oh, but we've only known each other a few hours. Oh, most people fall in love first, get married, and then fall out. Let's be different. Let's get married first. Then I'll court you all the way across the ocean, and maybe we'll be in love by the time we reach Bali, and we can get off there for our honeymoon. <laughs> Sounds different anyway. Say, hasn't anyone ever asked you to marry him? Oh, sure, several times. College boys aren't drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you're not still drunk, are you? Why? <laughs> you know, you know, I think you're mighty nice. You've done more to snap me out of it in a few hours than I could do for myself in a month. You haven't asked me any questions, and you haven't pried into my affairs. Yet you've made me feel that I've known you for years. Well, say, you do like me a little, don't you? Then why not take a chance? I've broken every bond that holds me at this town or country. I've got no place to go and plenty of money in my own right to spend when I get there. <laughs> well, by the way, you wouldn't mind if your husband didn't have to get up every morning and go to work, would you? Oh, that'd be terrible. <laughs> you see, we agree perfectly. Well, what do you say? Is it a go? Sure. Sure. Oh, what's the matter, Tim? My wife. 
just dead. Poor Tim. She's dead, Mr. Happy. My Mary. Now I've got to go to her. Too bad, Tim. Sorry. It's a good thing to give you a ride the once over every now and then. Well, Happy, it's just like a barber shop. You're next. Barber shop, eh? Well, that's where I met you, baby. I'll take a manicure. Your number's up too, lady. No, 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 not me, not me, no. All right, big shot. Turn on the heat. No, 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 please. I'll never tell, I'll never tell. Sorry, but the big boy says that any dame that will double cross a square guy like Happy, might give him the same deal. No, no, no! Let him have it. Well, that's over. Hey, you! Come here! Who are you? I work here. This gentleman is a guest. We were just leaving. You should have left a little earlier. You've seen too much. Mm. Shall I give it to him? Wait a minute. It's a tough break, kid, but I'm taking no chances on being identified. I see. Oh, you can't kill him. You can't shoot us. We didn't do anything. I'm sorry, lady, but I ain't got no choice. Just a minute. I don't suppose it's much use appealing to fellas like you. If this young lady and I were going to be married today, and go on a long trip. <laughs> oh, you're going on a long trip, all right. <laughs> Kiss your girl goodbye, buddy. We gotta move on fast. I've read about you gunmen and killers, and always felt that you were just a lot of cowardly rats. Now I know I was right. Where do I get that kiss? So long, smart guy. Okay, Lampy, let him have it. You two stay where you are. Give me police headquarters. Hello. Ryan speaking. Send the wagon up to Happy's Club on East 53rd Street. Uh-huh. Yeah. Believe it or not, I was just looking for somebody from Schenectady. Well, I'm from Schenectady. Mark Bell! Uh, just a minute, just oh. a minute. Come on, oh. come on. Oh. You're so unruly. Oh. 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 Get out, get out with you two. You kids don't have to worry. They won't keep you long at headquarters. What was the name of that island we are going to? Bali. Oh, yes. Yeah. What did you say your first name was? It's still Ruth. That's a swell name. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, pardon for 
Schenectady. Please, please. 